a couple of videos ago I asked you if you wanted to see my bug out bag and here it is. Uh, here is my, my bug out bag. Uh, what I will do is I will show you what's in the bag and on my person and I will uh, talk a little bit more about this after I've done that. First of all <coughs> I'm bringing hiking poles. Telescopic hiking poles and the reason is very simple. Um, I use these as tent poles. They double as tent poles and also um, if you get some kind of injury it's very handy to, to, to use these uh, you know hiking poles. Some people prefer to use them anyway. Not the first item you would expect uh, I guess but that's that's how it is. This is a real life uh, bug out bag. I'm seeing a lot of you know the kind of zombie apocalypse bug out bags out there on YouTube but uh, um, okay. <clears throat> um, first aid kit. In my first aid kit I also um, keep my uh, my um, toothbrush, a collapsible toothbrush and some toothpaste and if you need any kind of medication please remember to keep some of that you know in this first aid kit. I have several ways to light a fire and to heat and boil water um, and some people they prefer to use a gas canister. Ah, here's the rain. Yeah, that reminds me, my jacket or an anorak or smock, <laughs> that's a funny word, um, is uh, made of double ventile. It's a uh, heel trek. It's waterproof. And so are my trousers and my boots. Even my hat. Well, after a while, the water seeps through, but uh, it's it's quite waterproof. But before we move on with the video, uh, may I ask you to consider to subscribe to this channel. It really helps the channel a lot, especially when you're talking about topics like this. For some reason YouTube is not always a big fan of that, so you know how it is. Uh, if you want to help this channel, please consider subscribing. And also I have put the entire list of every item here um, on my website. Uh, there is a link in the video description so um, you can uh, uh, go there and, uh, and check it out. Okay. <laughs> this is a, uh, what do you call this, uh, alcohol burner. And this is a, uh, just a, you know, I guess some people say you need a special container for these alcohol fluids. Um, I don't have that. Gorilla tape, not a lot but a little bit that uh, I've wrapped around this flask. A steel water bottle. And I use this to, um, to boil water. Uh, you can boil the water directly in the flask and that purifies the water. I also have a water filter. Which I would consider adding a cooking pot um, because the steel flask is uh, is really only good for one one person. So if there are more of you, you should uh, obviously uh, also have a cooking pot so that you can boil up some, you know, a lot of water quickly. A woolen sock. <laughs> Uh, there's a reason why I have one there, uh, because I used the other one for the water filter flask, which is quite delicate. If you are responsible for purifying water for several people, you should probably use a, uh, a um, one of those with a pump, you know, that, that way you can purify a lot more water in, in a shorter time. I don't really need to bring my wooden cup and my wooden spoon, but I, you know, it's, it's, there is something about it, you know. I, I just like to bring this on my hike, so, yeah. <clears throat> also, 
I need to say a few words about the back backpack itself. Um, lots of people, they tend to go for these tactical backpacks, um, which is fine. Um, some of them, I think, are a bit too heavy. So that if the backpack is heavy in itself, you end up with carrying a lot of extra weight that you, you know, you don't, you don't want to carry extra weight. Um, this is a CPAC Arc Blast. Uh, it's been with me on more than a hundred hikes. It's very solid. Uh, you wouldn't think so, but because it's extremely lightweight. But it's um, uh, the most important thing is I'm used to this backpack. You know, it's it's almost part of me now. So. Um, uh, it's almost like I, I wouldn't want to leave it behind because I love this backpack and I know it works, you know, it's high quality uh, And why from my experience, it's not so much about the fabric itself But if you use low quality products a low quality backpack will uh, It's it's the seams, you know the seams come apart. So um, Go for a, uh, a good quality backpack and yes, you're going to carry this on your back. Um, okay, <clears throat> now we are moving into uh, navigation, the navigation area. Here's a compass with a mirror. <laughs> I guess you could uh, uh, spot the camera there, actually. That's a bit fun. Can you see the camera? <laughs> yeah, uh, I won't be bringing the camera but uh, obviously I, in such a situation, you know, a bug out scenario, but I, I'm bringing the camera now for obvious reasons. Um, learn how to use a compass and map and navigate by compass and map. Lots of people use their cell phone now, which, yeah, uh, you shouldn't really rely on that. Uh, I have Ranger beads here. It's a device to um, measure your, how far you have walked. Um, I can get back to that in uh, that technique in uh, another video. Um, before I forget, a bug out bag is not the same as a grab bag, uh, in my mind at least. A grab bag is something you grab if your house is on fire or your boat is sinking. And that's a bit different. Um, a bug out bag to me is is when you have at least a few minutes to pack your bag before you have to go. Spare batteries, quite important, especially if you use a GPS uh, and a flashlight. A good axe, um, not too heavy, but you might have noticed already that this axe is not my usual axe. It's a bit larger um, for obvious reasons. It's a very good axe. I haven't used it much, as you can see. I tend to grab my smaller axe, but when you really have to, you know, if you want to take down a tree, <clears throat> you should use at least an axe at least this size. A good quality knife and this is a Mura and uh, it has a ferro rod attached to it. A good quality knife doesn't have to be expensive like the Muras are, are quite cheap uh, and some of the expensive knives out there are not that good I have to say that um, but a, a you know traditional good bushcraft knife um, that's what you need. <clears throat> a folding saw. Okay. Yes, my backpack weighs a little bit less than 12 kilos, which I believe is about 26 pounds. So it's not that heavy. But I wouldn't want to 
carry uh, a backpack heavier than that. Uh, a map of your area. <clears throat> this is not my area, by the way. I'm just for, for privacy reasons and all that. I'm just bringing you a map, bringing a map here to show you uh, what I mean. A map. Bring a map of your area. <clears throat> Some books, uh, the pocket edition, uh, because they are more lightweight. I like to read and you probably shouldn't bring depressive books. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, okay, let's see now. <clears throat> uh, this is a uh, lightweight kind of paracord. It's quite... Uh, you know, it's, I wouldn't trust this if I want to go, you know, uh, what's it called, um, to, for mountain climbing. I wouldn't trust it, but it's it's good for, you know, it's very use, it's usable out in the field. <clears throat> yeah, I have some more string here as well, and I have some... Uh, Hiking poles, no, what do I say? I have some uh, <clears throat> tent pegs. I have a little stick. No, it's not a little stick. It's, uh, well, it is actually a little stick, but it's fishing line with, um, wrapped around a little stick. Now, you can use fishing line for snares as well as for fishing and I I have to say this snares are in my opinion it should be your last option it's it's not for fun okay and if you set snares and you forget them or leave them out in the woods you're a little bit of a not a nice person okay, okay uh Attached to my backpack, I also have this thing here. It weighs nothing. <laughs> it's um, it's a tent. Yeah, it's uh, it's. Uh, I'm a big fan of sea packs, you know that, and or set set packs. Mm. It's a two-person tent. Now, why am I bringing a tent? Why am I not like a proper bushcrafter sleeping under a tarp? And the reason is that I will not be bugging out alone. First of all, I'm a family man, so we will actually be bringing not only one tent, but two tents. Uh, and if I was bugging out alone, I wouldn't, I would still, uh, you know, bring my two dogs. And from my experience, you want to have a little house that you can close for yourself and the dogs because my dogs are extremely fast and they can hunt down anything. Um, which in such a scenario is a good thing really, but you, you need to... Uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to say that I don't want to end up in a situation where I lose one of the dogs because they take off and they don't find a way back uh, to, to, to me. So when uh, night comes, we will be in the tent and uh, uh, I will have one of the dogs, the smaller one, in the sleeping bag. Yes, I am bringing a sleeping bag with me. <clears throat> and the other one has his uh, own sleeping bag. So, uh, which I will show you in a few seconds. Uh, sleeping pad and let's open this backpack food mm. yeah I'm bringing food lightweight uh, dried food you, you just add some boiled water um, bring a brand use a brand that you have um, that is not new to you so that you know your stomach won't react to it in any way um, 
and uh, this these are very tasty and I'll actually have one of these for breakfast mm. a spork uh, a ground sheath uh, which doubles as a poncho a rain poncho which also covers my backpack uh, a GPS I'm not a big fan of GPS. I'm very traditional when it comes to navigation. Mosquito repellent. Uh, it's in a plastic bag because it has it has a um, this device. It it um, it actually burns some. It's it's a burner in here and it there comes a fume out and that chases away the mosquitoes. Or you could use some lotion, but this one is extremely effective. Uh, there are links. It's a call. It's called Tarmacel. <clears throat> uh, links to everything in the video description. Okay. I'll I'll get to this in a minute. A dog sleeping bag. One of my dogs will be sleeping in this one. We have practiced. <laughs> um, and you have seen that I may be in in some of my videos. And my sleeping bag. Um, I won't get into details on the sleeping bag. I have a link in the video description to that. Um, okay. Yeah, I think that's that's all. And on my person, let's see now. Yeah, I do have a mobile phone. It's a very old-fashioned it's not a smartphone I don't like the tracking uh, I can take out the battery here I can bring in a spare battery what's this now oh a pocket knife <laughs> that's that's uh, another knife but it's just I left it in my pocket here some time ago okay <clears throat> what's here Yes, um, I have some cotton pads with petroleum jelly, which I use as fire starters. I have now this is for my camera <laughs> on my keychain. I have tweezers for ticks and splinters and stuff this is my manuscripts I, I, I'm, a, I'm a novelist so I'm not leaving uh, uh, my manuscripts behind and also a uh, an arrowhead I usually keep this around my neck <clears throat> and I have some notes here I think Matches, multi tool, um, USB uh, charger, a, uh, a little device that you put on top of the alcohol burner, notebook, survival card. You get a lot of, you can get these everywhere, I think. It's this one is. You have, again, for snaring uh, and fishing, uh, so, and it's not something you should do for fun, the snaring thing there. Um, and I have uh, arrow, more arrowheads <clears throat> and a bowstring and a killer string and a needle. If I haven't said so already, what I bring is, is is tailored to me and my skills um, so and also of course my environment 
I'm going to get into that a little bit more, but um, I know how to build a bow out in the woods with only a knife. Uh, I know how to shoot a primitive bow. I've done that for many years. Um, I'm not saying that I'm going to be hunting, running around like, uh, you know, <laughs> and hunting with a primitive bow. It's, it's, that is something that takes a lot of time and it's very difficult. But I can make a bow and it will have, it could have some uses. A watch, <laughs> toilet paper, you don't have to bring a lot. Uh, I don't want to get into details, but there are natural op alternatives out in the woods. <laughs> okay, a USB uh, wire for charging your devices. Uh, this is a... Uh, this is for, hold on, for hanging uh, this steel bottle above your fire uh, pencil, uh, flashlight, um, yeah, this is also something that's not on my list, but um, it's a, uh, it's a fire steel and also you can use it as a handle when for bow drill. Now bow drill is shouldn't be your first choice when it comes to uh, making fire, you know. Uh, a small multi-tool and a lighter. Okay, that's it. That's what's in my bug out bag. Now if you live in an urban area and it will take you like two days to get out, get out of, of that urban area and your bug out bag should look very different from mine. Uh, if you live in the desert, <laughs> obviously it should look very different from mine. I live in a rural area in Norway. This is my bug out bag for most of the year, but not in not the coldest months of winter because I would bring some more clothes and some other items as well for winter but for most of the year this is what I would bring and this is for me and my two dogs my two dogs have their own backpacks dog backpacks and they will carry dog food and collapsible water bowls so there are some items I, I'm not going to show you, like my ID uh, and some information about uh, blood type, uh, telephone number and so on for my family members. Uh, I would also bring cash as much as you can afford um, without getting crazy, you know, a thousand US dollar or the equivalent to that would be, uh, you know, should get you quite far um, but first and foremost you need to adapt your bug out bag to your environment and and what you believe is the most likely scenario if we were driving to somewhere i would still bring this but i would then also bring other items uh, if you eventually need to leave your car here in Norway, you will probably be in a forested area. Then I would uh, grab my bug out bag and uh, go hiking. Um, so I am using equipment that I have used my entire life. I'm, I'm very confident with these items. I'm not, there is nothing in my bug out bag that is strange to me that I don't know how to use and so on. So it's, it's a bug out bag for a real life situation here in Norway. If you have kids or if you know, if you're under 40 or you have kids under 40, your or family members under 40, also bring iodine iodine tablets because if there is a nuclear disaster um, there are some I can't remember the reasons actually right now but if you're under 40 I believe you take iodine tablets over 40 you don't need it 
So, yeah. Um, let's have a look at the notes. I always forget something, you know. Um, yeah, this should be your bug out bag should be dependent on climate and if you're in an urban urban or rural area, and uh, it should be dependent on where you're going, your skill level, seasons, and many other factors. There is one other topic that I will just mention here at the end of the video. Uh, this being YouTube and all that, but you know, uh, it's the question of firearms. <clears throat> uh, keep that in mind, make a decision. I'm not going to say anything more about that. Yeah. Okay, um, as I said, this is not your grab bag, this is your bug out bag. You have a few minutes to get everything packed. Uh, for instance, the, the, the sleeping bag will uh, need to be stored not in the bag, you know. Um, so you will obviously have to get the sleeping bag down and into, uh, into, the, into this, this bag here. Um, Apart from that, I think uh, this is all. I think I'll be quite okay with with these items. Um, let's hope we won't have to use our bug out bags. Um, yeah. And you know, there's going to be things that you can't bring. You, you need to make some choices. You need to prioritize here, you know. And some people have different... Um, would prioritize different than, than, than I have done. Um, but um, yeah, I think I'll be okay. So um, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, leave a comment, give it a like and, and all that. And uh, yeah, okay, have a nice day, bye. I forgot to mention that I always bring one of these um, cotton scarves. A shamag, this one is called, and it has like a million uses from everything from uh, you can use it as a fire starter to uh, you know, um, if you have a broken arm, uh, bone fractures, things like that. So uh, that's very wise to bring that as well.